Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and it's been a while since I've sat down and done a very casual catch-up career conversation and this is something that I used to do a lot more with my work vlogs so I really just wanted to catch up with you guys a little bit and I also recently passed the one year mark at my current role at my current company and I know a lot of you guys are just starting out in cybersecurity and maybe you're also hitting milestones at work in your early career and I would love to kind of start a conversation in the comments so yeah let's just get into it. The first thing I want to discuss is overall just how it's been at work personally i've been very very busy i have definitely had more stressful days than non-stressful days and that's something that i'm always keeping in mind especially when it comes to work-life balance because i don't want to burn out especially when i'm juggling my full-time job and this youtube channel and all the other projects that i'm working on so that's something i'm always thinking about in the back of my head also interesting enough i even though i've been working in cybersecurity for about four years at this point because my first job even though i worked there for two and a half almost three years i was in a rotation program that rotated teams every single year basically i haven't actually been on a team longer than one year besides my current role so that is something very interesting to keep in mind because i know a lot of times people say that you have to stay on a team for a year to be able to pick up things and be actually productive on the team which i don't necessarily agree with but maybe it's a little bit different for like a very technical role where you actually need you know a long time to get acclimated to stuff but for the most part i think i've learned a lot across all the teams i've been on and i like having experience or like understanding the different parts of cybersecurity, not just one specific part so honestly i kind of prefer it that way how work has been i've also had a lot of new teammates as well as a new manager and new projects and hopefully this is somewhat relatable to you guys if you're also recently in the workforce and in your early career or have been working for a few years i don't know if this feeling ever goes away um, i'm sure five ten years from now there's still going to be things i don't know and things that are new that kind of stress me out a little bit and i really think this is where your career kind of ebbs and flows there's going to be busy periods and there's going to be non-busy periods or kind of like slower periods and you should definitely take advantage of both of those times whether it's to grow in your career or to like take initiative or work on a project that you've been really interested in. So I guess this is what they mean by your career is what you make of it. But I've also been leading my own projects, which is also kind of shocking to me because in my previous company, I would never have been, you know, been allowed to touch this project or a project like this. And I'm still learning as I go. Yeah, it's definitely a very interesting learning experience and it's definitely stretching me a little bit, but I'm excited to kind of update you guys on that in the future. So basically it's just a lot of working with new people, new projects, different styles of work and different styles of communication. That's something that you're always going to get a reminder of every time you get a new person on your team or a new manager or you switch teams or you switch companies. There's always going to be some kind of reminder that, hey, this person doesn't work similarly to the other types of teammates or managers or coworkers that I've worked with in the past. And you kind of get to learn that new scenario i guess of working along with them because because that's kind of what teamwork is or like working on a team yeah that's also been a very big learning experience as well i don't think that's ever something that will stop um, unless you have like 20 30 years of experience and you've seen it all maybe that is the case but at four years in i think i'm still learning on that front as well so that is kind of my updates i guess for work in general obviously i didn't want to sit here and just be overwhelmingly positive to you guys because i know this is a cybersecurity career channel but i don't want to be like oh my career is 100 percent set in stone i know exactly where i'm going to go and what i'm going to do and what roles i want to go into and manage this project or i want to go into this area but when you think about it in the long run your career is really just how you spend your days not gonna lie there are going to be stressful days if you have experience them already but there's also no such thing as a perfect job where every day you're like going in there and it's sunshine and rainbows but i will say that there should at least be more positive days than bad days and that's like the key here for i guess like balance and work-life balance so you always want to keep that in check but just know if it ever tips that scale then maybe it's time to look for a new role just things to keep in mind i know you know there's still ongoing talks of recession and layoffs and things like that and we're coming off of months of tech layoffs but that also doesn't mean that you should grind away and stress out and burn out at the end of the day because that is very tough and time consuming to recover from. So obviously as someone who is still in the early career, I'm still learning as I go. And I think this also brings me very nicely into my next topic that I want to discuss and that is long-term career work goals or my career outlook. So usually I talk about this in the form of 
Q and A's because I would say three times a year or so I would do a career Q and A, and this is usually a question that I answer specifically for my short term and long term career goals, or I guess five, ten, fifteen year. Those are kind of like milestones that I would personally track. Depending on your definition of long term and short term, I would say that most of my goals are long term, and my short term goals are just kind of like things on my to do list um, that I have out kind of like written out for a few months at a time, but I would consider that relatively short term. And then my long-term goals are anything longer than a year. So I do think that this has really changed depending on um, where I was at in my career. In the beginning, I really wanted to be on the red team. I was like really into red team. I was really into offensive security. Originally, I was on a junior pen testing team in one of my rotations in my previous company. At that point, I had actually gotten advice from one of my mentors that, hey, Sandra, if you want to go into red team, then you should go into a consulting firm that focuses specifically on red team assessments for kind of like a third party that a company would hire to assess themselves. And what he told me was the fact that a lot of companies aren't willing or maybe aren't able to invest in their cybersecurity talent in that way. And oftentimes it takes going to a different company and then if you want to come back to this company or wherever you are, then to take those skills with you that you've learned in your previous roles. And that's something that I still think about to this day. But really one thing that has definitely changed is the fact that I think in the long term, I really see myself working in less of a full-time W2 position and more of a either a contractor or freelance or part-time even, some kind of work that is either dedicated to a specific window of time whether it be a six month contract or 12 months or 18 months or maybe i'm in a more flexible role where i'm working monday tuesday wednesdays or 25 30 hours a week and i'm able to better split my time between a job and and other things that i'm working on or of course the most flexible option which is freelancing and while i don't think that there are many cybersecurity professionals who do freelance work um, or at least not a lot that i've seen if anything most of the freelance work that i've seen on the tech side are more so for web developers whether it's front end back end or full stack maybe those are some things to consider um, if i want to go back into coding but as you can see basically a lot of things are in the air right now and i don't really have a answer to my long-term career vision, but I know it's not going to be a full-time nine to five. Unless more companies start doing a four-day work week and I end up working for a company that does a four-day work week, that would definitely be a potential option. But at least for right now, I think that a nine to five job probably isn't going to be my long-term career goal. And I also feel like in the future, a lot of work going to head towards more flexibility, especially with AI and more technical advances, even things like ChatGPT, which makes your life a whole lot easier with you know, just a click of a button, asking ChatGPT an answer to a specific question. Obviously it's not 100%, but it definitely is really cool to be able to use. I think something else that has really led me to this answer is the fact that I don't remember where I heard it, but there was some kind of blog or podcast or maybe even a talk that I was listening to at some point about professional development. And someone was like, if you don't want your boss's job or even your boss's boss's job, then you should reassess your long-term career goals. And that is something that I have thought about all the time in the back of my head because I've never really aspired to become in my manager's position, for example, or in my tech lead's position or in my VP's position or my MD's position. I don't really have goals to go into management. Maybe this could change in the future, but that is not something that I want for my career. And that's also what made me question things like, so if that's not what I want in my career and not the direction I want to take, then what is the direction I want to take? And the main things that I value out of my career are flexibility, being able to work on things that I want to work on, as well as just having good work-life balance. So these three things are kind of like my core pillars of what I want out of a job. And that also brings me into my next topic of travel and work. So for those of you who don't know, me and Luca are actually going on a long-term road trip. And this is going to be a few months. And this is something that I've always wanted to do. It's always been very inspiring to me, seeing people kind of like living on the road or like man life and things like that, which we won't necessarily be doing, but something kind of similar to that. Just having the freedom to be able to pick up and go somewhere and visit a new city or um, go on a hike, be able to be in a different place that you don't have to be in a set location to do a certain thing. Just not being tied down to a specific place. And that is why we are doing this long-term road trip. We're still going to be working, but we also have days off planned. So I am very, very excited for this. Okay, I'm calling it a baby step, but I don't really mean it as a baby step because this is a very, very big trip. And obviously it's going to be very busy balancing work as well as this road trip. Um, as well as my YouTube channel and all the things that I do on the side, as well as trying to sleep eight hours a day, which 
I always try to do at least. Okay, four things then if I add sleep because that's eight hours and that's already a third of my day. These four things are going to be everything that I'm going to be doing. I'm just really excited to go on this trip and I know obviously this is something that I'm not that shouldn't be taken lightly, especially because in the back of my mind, I'm like, what if this impacts my performance at work? What if I am not able to do something at a certain time? Um, what if I'm, I don't know, just a lot of what ifs basically in my head. But the main thing that's kind of like pushing me through that is the fact that if I don't do this now, then I will 100% regret it in the future. And that fear is definitely a lot bigger. Um, weighs on me a lot heavier. I, I think that's kind of it. Also because I turned 25 last year and somehow I have this quarter life crisis going on. Don't worry, it's not that serious, but yeah, it just makes me think about how fast life goes and I really want to kind of like live my best life. And I guess challenge the norms of having to go through school, get through college, um, start your first full-time job at 21 or 22, work for 45 years, retire at 65, and then start traveling and living your life because I don't want to wait that long to be able to do the things that I want to do and this road trip is one of the big things on my bucket list that I really wanted to get done and sure I guess I could have pushed out until I was 30 or something like that but, but with all the life milestones that are expected of you by 30 or in your 30s I don't want to go there but yeah just things to think about if any of you guys are also considering some kind of long-term travel, um, especially if you work remotely, you should definitely do it. Obviously in a responsible way, but yeah, I will also be taking you guys along with me. I will be vlogging a lot of it. So yeah, I'm just really excited for that road trip to start. By the time you see this video, I think we would already have been on the road. So that is another exciting thing. And I do have a second YouTube channel where I'm going to be posting most of our travel content there. And that is going to be the primary like travel and vlog content while living on the road and working on the road so i'm very very excited about that so if you guys didn't know i had a second channel it's linked in my description below please subscribe it would definitely mean the world to me i'm definitely still trying to grow that channel right now but it is currently a lot smaller than my current channel and in terms of the future of youtube and this channel and my second channel um, i'm definitely not going to stop posting this is one of my favorite platforms to be on and i really think that this has opened so many doors of opportunities whether it's sharing my perspective or learning from you guys or being able to be a mentor along with all the other perks of having a youtube channel all right so that's it for this video i would love to hear how you guys have been in the comments if you guys are open to sharing also feel free to connect in the discord channel i believe we're at over 3,000 members now and it is a great community for you guys to talk about all things certifications job opportunities uh, capture the flags, anything cybersecurity related is all on our discord. And if there's a channel that you want me to make specifically, let me know. I will do that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos on this channel every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!